Well, all right. What have you got for us for coming into Christmas and as a wrap for the year? Uh, mate, you know, take us through. We don't probably need too many reminders of the bad things, but let's just get a recap of where it stands now and then where we're looking forward over the Christmas break and into next year. Not a problem at all. Well, we certainly are. Uh, we've had a very challenging year this this past year, but the economies of the world, uh, ex-Australia at the moment, seem to be powering ahead. There's a little bit of turbulence in Asia, which is infecting Australia as well. But of course, we've had a series of lockdowns and extended lockdowns, so our economy is still well and truly in recovery phase. But uh, the U.S., Europe, powering ahead, will likely continue to do so into next year. Uh, I think we're going to have a fantastic Christmas period. I think that's going to help to drive recovery, uh, continue to drive recovery in the U.S. Uh, and Europe. And we'll hopefully see uh, lockdowns and things lifted here in Australia so that people can get out and, and spend and really uh, drive the, the consumer spending side of things, which is a big portion of our GDP. Uh, but what I might do is just take it back to the very high level and the things that I look at in my quadrant model, uh, actually it isn't my quadrant model, it's, it's Hedgeye's quadrant model, but it's a fantastic model to use for the full cycle investing process. And those three big macro input factors are growth, inflation, and interest rates. So growth is GDP, interest rates, interest rates and inflation is inflation. And the direction of those things, if you get those right, you're gonna get a lot of things right in the global macro story. And so as we speak, and I'm sure Australians have noticed in the last couple of weeks, here in Australia, we've seen interest rates beginning to rise. Now, the RBA hasn't officially increased interest rates, but the bond market in Australia, sensing the fact that we've got a bit of inflationary pressures that have built up in our economy here in Australia, is pricing in some rate rises next year. So the RBA is very likely going to have to, to increase interest rates to put a dampener on inflation, which is running reasonably hot. Uh, but also, they'll probably be trying to cool down this red hot property market as well. So we we can certainly be anticipating that interest rates are going to rise in Australia. The good news about our growth story here in Australia is that it also should be increasing, but we're not going to see a substantial increase in GDP really until the third quarter of next year, uh, the, the first quarter and the second quarter. So I'm looking at fiscal year quarters. So the January or the I should say the March and the June quarters. So those are quarters one and two. Uh, are going to see mild increases in Australian GDP, not anything to set the house on fire, which means we're still going to be struggling a little bit to get get off the mat, as it were, the economic mat. Um, but by the time we get to the back half of next year, Australia ought to be looking quite good and powering ahead. Uh, juxtapose this with the U.S., and we're seeing that, again, growth is continuing to power ahead in, as they recover. Uh, inflation in the U.S. is running red hot and interest rates are also tipped to be rising next year with the Federal Reserve there looking to um, hit the brakes or, or tap them higher. What will be interesting in the U.S. in terms of all of this is that as we enter the mid to back half of next year, the U.S. will probably start to slow. So we'll have Australia picking up steam, the U.S. slowing down. Obviously, as we get into next year and we get into that part of the year, we'll, we'll see what the data is showing and what's, um, what's happening at the time. But that's sort of the broader macroeconomic things that are going on that are likely to affect and move markets.